Yeah, hi everybody, Ryan here again. Uh, today we're down here in Richmond, Indiana at the uh, Petro. Uh, had a delivery that I that I brought out of uh, Louisiana, uh, right down like a mile and a half down the road here. So I got in there last night, uh, got a break in on site, then uh, I came down here because uh, my next pickup isn't for a few hours down uh, by Vandalia over there at the uh, PH, uh, P&G warehouse. So um, called them. And they said uh, check back. It's supposed to be ready till 4:30 this afternoon, but they said check back about 12:30 might be ready, and they might have me come on down. Uh, but any, I'm only 30 minutes away here, so so uh, came over here. I wasn't gonna. I was just gonna kind of hang out, and I uh, seen there wasn't a line at the uh, Blue Beacon truck washer behind me. Uh, so I crept over there and uh, got a truck wash, and and uh, and I I don't get engine washes a lot. Uh, I've had some issues in the past, and uh, what just happened here is exactly why I don't do it a lot, and that's what I'm going to get into and explain on this video. Uh, so, as you all know, water is a conductor, and it can cause all kinds of pr crazy problems if you got some wiring issues and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, as I said before, it's been a long time. I think the last time I got it, I mean, I've gotten a couple of truck washes. Uh, you know, I run in the snow and rain and all that, so. Uh, Seems like every time I get a truck wash in the winter, especially in the winter time, I don't get a lot of truck washes uh, unless I got a bunch of salt and stuff, or I'm in, like I'm, I'm going to be in you know down south in Southern California or Arizona for a while. I might get one down there just to get all the salt and stuff off. But usually, it seems like if I get a truck wash in the winter time, it snows like the next day, and it, it's like completely pointless. So and it's a waste of sixty, seventy dollars. So um, I don't do a whole lot in the winter time. So the last time I've had an engine wash was back, I believe, in August or so maybe September of last year. And uh, I was up at the uh, Blue Beacon there in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And uh, I, if you all recall, I if you all followed me or, or subscribed and have watched the videos went from back, back then, uh, right after that I picked up a load up at, uh, I believe, Glens Rock, uh, Wyoming, up by up close to Casper. And that load went down in the Phoenix area, Arizona area, Phoenix, Arizona area. Uh, so after I got that engine wash up there, I started having all kinds of problems. Uh, like the truck was derating, um, and I kind of narrowed it down. I think I had a couple of videos on what was going on uh, with that. Uh, we finally got down in there by um, down into New. I came cut down 191 or 491 there down into uh, down across Colorado, and um, I actually took a state route down through Colorado and all that. But I got down into New Mexico, I think on 191 or 491, and uh, kind of hooked my PDI up and and because I couldn't get this problem to go away and, and I kind of got it narrowed down to the um, atmospheric pressure and temperature sensor and um, I did some videos on that so if you're interested yeah, you can probably find those um, and I ended up when I got I got down in the Phoenix early that morning the next morning and I stopped at Kenworth and they had the sensor and I replaced it and uh, all those problems went away for the rest of that trip so it all started with that truck wash I don't know uh, that water got into that little sensor and screwed it up or what so um, and I don't know what kind of soap the soap has acid and stuff in it too uh, you know to neutralize the road grimes more bait you know salt is more of, of a base so you use an acid to neutralize it so uh, I just got so I had problems in and I was kind of a scare uh, kind of afraid to get with I had a my engine harness was kind of ratty um, so again, uh, another video, uh, I, I replaced the engine harness uh, on the, the Cummins side of the end. There's, on your ECM, and I'll show you here in a second, there's, uh, there's two plugs. Um, one of those is the Cummins side, which hooks up to all the sensors and everything on the engine. Then the other side, the big plug, is what they call the, cut. I mean, when I worked at Caterpillar, we call it the customer side, or the OE, I mean, Cummins, or uh, Kenworth calls it the OEM side. I know at Caterpillar, we call it the customer side. Because that's basically where uh, you get where everything goes out to the truck or piece of equipment or whatever type of uh, application that engine's going into. That other plug is what enter, you know links the engine to the the vehicle or the machine or whatever. So um, I haven't replaced that one yet. I've had some. It's kind of getting kind of ratty as well. Um, the my coolant level sensor is part of the customer side of the harness, and um, I've that that uh, ding in the low coolant level i know this it's a it's a problem on these uh kenworths um with that coolant level sensor i've had guys ask me about it and i i've said i've replaced the sensor 
And at right now, I just have mine unplugged. I just unplugged it. I get I don't get the dinging anymore. Um, it just does a high voltage code, I believe. So I got a check engine light on, which you guys in some of the videos you might have seen the check engine light. That's what it's for, uh, because it, it shows an open or a high voltage um, going to that sensor because obviously it's unplugged, so it's not going to be getting it read. It's just going to show the voltage is too high because I think those are they run at like five volts or something. Then it should change that voltage, and that's how it. Uh, knows what the level is if there's a problem or not so anyway that is uh, so i've got that unplugged and wrapped up up there that uh plug from the coolant level sensor so i just went in here and got a truck wash uh, i wanted to get the engine was getting pretty grimy and i wanted to get it cleaned up because if it if it stays nice i uh uh when i get back up home here tomorrow i've had people ask me about we want to do like kind of go through like what you would look for if you were going to buy a used truck and i wanted to kind of get the truck kind of cleaned up a little bit better so we could do that um, have my wife kind of help me out with uh, with the camera person uh, type role, make it a little easier. So, <clears throat> so I figured I might as well get the truck washed. But anyways, went through the blue beacon here. So I go ahead and wash the engine, but be careful around the harnesses and all that. Just kind of hit around it, get stuff, filters and all that that's dirty. Uh, so they did that. I went in and paid and uh, came out here, started up the truck and pulled out. And I've got like the dash is lit up like a Christmas tree. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to be... I got to go to PNG in like less than four hours and like P if you guys know PNG, these big box places, you do not want to be late. You cannot be late or you could be there for days basically if you miss your appointment. It's it's no joke. So like I started freaking out like what is going on here? So I looked up on the PDI here. Uh, you guys know behind me, I've done a lot on that. And uh, everything was related to that coolant level sensor. I was getting, I had like three different codes for coolant level. I mean, it gave me the stoplight, uh, shut down engine immediately and all that stuff. So it's like somehow shorted to where it was thinking the truck's like completely out of antifreeze. Uh, so uh, we'll go out here real quick and uh, I'll show you what I started checking things. And I had some contact cleaner with me and I'll show you what I did to remedy, that, remedy the problem. So we'll go outside real quick here. All right, so there's the blue beacon. We're outside here. Got the hood open, and here's the ECM right here, guys. Now, this plug right here, that's the uh, come inside harness. Now, this one over here, this is the uh, the customer side or the OEM side. So, and I've replaced this whole harness. I've got a video on doing that uh, previously, so you guys can check that out if you're interested. Uh, they're about twelve hundred dollars thousand twelve hundred dollars i can't remember exactly what i paid for the uh, come inside uh, so i'll show you what i found or it's kind of my fault i guess part of this uh, so as i said you got that uh coolant level sensor let me actually go around the other side and see what better <clears throat> So that coolant level sensor is right up there underneath the uh, reservoir. And as you can see, uh, right here, mine's unplugged right now. It's a new sensor, but I put a new sensor in and it still started acting crazy and all that. So I'm tired of dealing with it. So I figure it's probably in the uh, harness somewhere. And I don't want to replace that yet. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to, one of these days, I'm going to kind of trace this down. So here's the plug right here. And I just got the, you can see the wiring's all, all ratty on this. Kind of like the engine harness, the Cummins harness was. So when I uh, came out of the truck wash here, this was all covered with water and everything. So I, uh, and as I said before, that uh, water is conductor. It will, you can... Electricity will obviously, you know, you can get electrocuted in water, so water will do crazy things to uh, unprotected electrical connectors or wiring. So if you've got bad spots in your wiring on the engine and you get a truck wash, um, you might start having problems. So what I did here, uh, I use this contact cleaner. You can buy this anywhere. Uh, well, not quite anywhere. I mean, Walmart might have it, but any of your auto parts store. Um, you can either use this or the non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Um, it has acetone in it, and spray that on there all over inside the plug and all that, which I should probably tape this up, but then I kind of worry about water holding in it, so that's why I've kind of kept it open as I have here. Uh, so 
I just sprayed all this out with this contact cleaner and this stuff dries really quick and it uh, dried up all, cleaned it all up and, and got all the water out of it. Then I went back, I had the truck running while I was doing it. So as soon as I did that, it dried up and I went back in and the truck and everything was back to normal. Again, it clear, cleared all that, that uh, low coolant level and that engine shut down and all that by itself. So, so one thing with that, like I said, if you get a, you start getting lights and stuff, let me turn this around here. All right, so yeah, if you get a tr engine wash and a truck wash and you start having all kinds of weird problems with your engine and you have uh, like a Bosch like I have or some other type of electronic service tool or PDI, um, you can kind of look at those codes and see what they're related to and you can say, okay, I've got a bad connection or wiring problem with this particular sensor, or this particular component. If you're getting, when you, when you have, or if you drive through a bunch of rain, real hard rain or something, um, sometimes you might see an issue there too so it can kind of help you find some problems but it can really scare you or you might have a problem where it might actually shut the truck down so luckily this is just the coolant level sensor and i knew exactly what it was for the most part since i had that plug uh, hanging there kind of naked so uh, just wanted to share that little experience with you guys um, like i said i kind of uh i don't get engine washes very much like i said because you'll tell them you'll tell them one thing and uh and you're not there watching them you know they don't you don't really know what they're going to do and, and these people they don't know most of them probably don't know anything about engines or anything else i mean it's possible some might but but uh so i i, I guess again just kind of be careful with that i wouldn't i wouldn't be getting the engine washed off once a week or something like that i, I would kind of do it use it sparingly every when it gets kind of gets dirty uh because like I said, the actual engine here really wasn't that dirty. Like where most of my dirt was, was down around the steering gear box and the filters and, you know, because you get that residue and stuff on them and whatnot. So, so that's really about all I do. Um, like I said, it's been five or six months. So, but I got, now it's getting warmer at home. I got a pressure washer at home. So um, I'll wash it in the summertime myself and because uh, I know what to stay away from. Like I said, if you're going to go in, I'd tell, I mean, try to tell them to stay away from your harnesses and all that. I mean, but uh, be careful with it because, like I said, it can kind of bring out some gremlins if you got if you got those problems in your harness or with some connections with your sensors. So, um, again, just thought I'd share that with you. Hope you all enjoyed it. Um, and if you guys haven't subscribed, please do that. Uh, like the video, give us a thumbs up, and uh, hit the bell for the updates. And uh, as you all know, um, we're always doing the Landstar stuff, owner op stuff. Uh, truck maintenance stuff always got something going on uh, coming into spring here uh, farm and stuff be starting back up got a lot of uh, farm equipment tractor maintenance stuff to do uh, so again uh, thanks for watching hope that helps you out and gives you a little bit more info and uh, we'll see y'all next time